Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld. This program is about the evolution of who we are as human beings, and part of that is a series I like to do on creativity. So that's why I have today very popular writer, Jason Starr, talking about his new book, Savage Lane. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Nice and me. you, as I heard, are kind of responsible for bringing back a kind of noir, the dark elements into fiction. Um, is that true? I mean... Well, if I'm, I don't know if I'm wholly responsible, but my, um, when my first book was published, um, Cold Caller, back in 1997, mm -hmm. noir fiction wasn't as popular as it was now as a, as a sub-genre mm -hmm. of mystery fiction. So, uh, you know, in the 1940s and 50s um, and 60s, writers like James M. Cain, Raymond Chandler, um, mm -hmm. Charles Williford later on, were big proponents of the noir style of writing, but that kind of um, subsided a bit in the 80s and 90s, so I, maybe I did bring it back. Well, well noir is not just um, mystery, it's like weird human elements, right? Or how would you define it? Well, some people associate noir with film noir. They think uh -huh. of uh, Humphrey Bogart movies or, right, um, or that. noir film, and it's kind of, kind of getting mixed up in that, but to me, noir is more about um, characters, mm. uh, sort of the um, dark side of human nature, um, temptation, um, psychological thrillers, uh, kind of border on what, what noir is to me. Like Hitchcock, almost. Uh, Hitchcockian. Yeah. Yeah, Hitchcockian um, characters who aren't necessarily black or white, but mm -hmm. gray. Maybe a good guy who makes bad decisions or bad person who tries to redeem mm. himself, mm. but doesn't deal with uh, good and evil in the typical way. So you really go into that in this new book, Savage Lane. I mean, would you say this is the deepest you go in, have gone into that kind of um, well, personality? Well, it's sort of a bit of a departure for me because it's probably more satirical than, oh. any, than any of... It's a noir satirical? Yeah, it's set um, in the suburbs of... Uh, it's set in Westchester, uh -huh. an affluent suburb, and it's about a... Uh, you know, affluent, affluent group of uh, people, and there's one man, a married man, has these fantasies about the this divorced woman uh -huh. next door, and th it's about their misconceptions of each other, people uh -huh. uh, misjudging each other, and obviously there's a crime is committed. A crime is committed, of course. <laughs> it has to be a crime. <laughs> it has to be a crime. And so, you know, um, would you say that's, um, h how do you access those dark elements in yourself? I mean, do you write from like a projection of yourself? I mean, how do you create characters? Because maybe you have cr committed a crime. I, no, I don't know, but how do, you, how do you get into the minds of these characters to understand their motivations? I feel like I'm usually writing about what I fear mm -hmm. more than I'm writing directly about myself. So. When I'm coming up with an idea for a book, um, I usually think of it almost as a pitch for a movie where I'm thinking about a, a situation. And yeah, it's usually not very closely directed to my life, but you know, I've written, my first novel was about um, a telemarketer, and, and I, it was called Cold Caller. And I had worked as a telemarketer when um. I was starting. Know. And so that was your inspiration. Starting out, yeah. Book. So I've, I've I've certainly mined my old my jobs I've had over the years in my books, and um, even in this in, in Savage Lane, it takes place in an area of Westchester that I know really well because I have friends who live up there. Oh, I see. So I'll write from my own experiences in that way, but I feel like the characters when I'm creating characters, it's more I feel like I'm an actor, and uh -huh. I'm almost um, taking on their sort of attitude. Have you acted? Persona. Are you in act Have you done acting? I have a theater background. I started oh, out writing oh. plays after college. I was a member of... Because these are very theatrically based, it seems, from, the, from what I've read. You know, it has a kind of theatrical, interactive element to it. There's definitely, I would say, a, a, a claustrophobia yeah. to my writing that I think has been influenced by starting out writing plays. Um, I feel I'm always very aware of finding the drama in uh -huh. a scene and the conflict between the characters. And I think in, when I'm writing thrillers, uh -huh. that could hopefully really amp up the tension. W would you say you were influenced by Harold Pinter at all? Definitely. Yeah, because yeah, I, 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 yeah, I see. Yeah, Pinter so. was a big influence. Mamet. Um, uh -huh. Beckett. I, I was, I've always been attracted oh, to, Beckett, yeah. to minimalism. Yeah, um, right. 
So when I started out, Hemingway was a big influence, uh -huh. and, uh, Raymond Carver. Anybody, any, any writing that was very clear and concise. And then when I started writing crime fiction, mm -hmm. Elmore Leonard mm -hmm. was a big... So do you make your sentences about. just technically kind of short with um, a point in that sentence? Like, you know, lots of writers, maybe nonfiction writers more, go on and on and link concepts together. But I would say a fiction writer like this makes like a point in a sentence and boom, lets it sit for a second. Is, is that your style or what would you say? Yeah, yeah, I do think so. I'm, I don't like to get the writing in the way of uh, the story. Uh -huh. So I don't want the reader to ever feel like they're reading. I want them to lose themselves in the uh -huh. story and I want to have the experience of sort of the words disappearing. Right, so you don't get, then you don't want them to get lost in the language or the poetry. You want them to just get what's happening. Yeah, I want them to feel like they're, I mean, I think uh -huh. for me the best you know, the, the times I'm enjoying reading most is when I'm so absorbed in a book that it feels like there's a movie going on right. in my head. So I, I feel like s sometimes like w the words can take you out of a story somehow, if, uh -huh. you know, um, no, and I try to avoid that. No, you're right, right. I mean, actually, you keep re referencing movies. This does feel like a film. Uh, do you see this, Savage Land, as a, as a possible? I see all my movies, <laughs> 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 all my books as possible uh, Well, why not? Movies. Um, several have been you know, optioned over the years. Uh -huh. um, I once wrote an original screenplay that um, for Halle Berry that she developed. Never got made, but I did, okay. I did well get paid. Okay, well that's great. Hey, that's how, you know, no, that's as a writer. excellent, <laughs> excellent. Because, you know, it seems like in your books you really take the average, the mundane realities of life and twist them a little bit, which is something everyone can relate to, which is... Yeah, I like to write out of real life. Mm -hmm. um, most of my characters are everyday people. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like to think of it as everyday, ordinary people right. and extraordinary situations. Mm -hmm. So the, the characters are very recognizable. Um, I've never had a, um, I've never really had like a, a, a police detective as a main character uh -huh. or, or PI. I've always, I've had them as peripheral characters mm -hmm. in my books, but for me it's been more interested, interesting to just focus on real people, real situations. Um, th this book starts out um, with a, a sort of an argument between a, a couple coming home from a dinner party uh -huh. in Westchester. And while it seems on the surface as a very typical mm -hmm. interaction, um, out of that comes this whole um, crime. Yeah, this whole <laughs> uh, situation that leads to a crime and a murder. So, so I mean, that's sort of, I mean, we read in the newspapers every day normal people getting caught up in something strange. I mean, is there like an underlying fear in our culture that will become like a headline or something? Do you, do you sense that, you know? Um, I think, you know, I think we're also exposed to um, the headlines and, mm. um, and, and, and crimes, that, you know, all the time that I think there's certainly you know, gr for me, I, I'll just say, growing up in the '70s mm -hmm. in New York, I think there was a perception about crime that I mm -hmm. certainly grew up around, mm -hmm. and you know, areas of New York were mm -hmm. uh, dangerous, and you couldn't go into the city. I lived, grew up in Brooklyn, and you mm -hmm. couldn't, you know, coming back from Manhattan late at night was a dangerous thing. It's hard <laughs> to imagine now, um, right, with all the <laughs> mobs in Brooklyn. Yeah, hard to imagine <laughs> now. But I think that sense of um, Fear so it yeah. was pervasive, you know, but it's embedded up. in our culture I in some ways. I mean, but I mean, possibly. Uh, but the other aspect of that is like normal people, regular people, have some noir aspects to them in their inner life. Do, do you get at that? Yeah, I think yeah. you know, like everyone, I think is um, capable of making a bad decision or has made a bad decision in their life right. or. Has or done a few. <laughs> <laughs> or a few for some people, some right. politicians. <laughs> um, but, or something they feel ashamed about. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, yeah, I'm usually um, exaggerating uh -huh. the, these right. sorts of situations in my books because I just think in fiction it's more easy, you know, it's just more fun as a writer to go to the extreme. Mm -hmm. And also in, the, in, in a lot of these situations, I'll just add that I, th I find a lot of humor and satire. Uh -huh. um, like well, in what well, way? Like well, well, my books have dark themes. Mm. I think sometimes the darkest 
characters could be the most entertaining, mm -hmm. and there, there's sort of an irony and a humor. Well, give me an example in one of your books where that where you have um, that more. Well, one of the major characters in this book is mm -hmm. um, this guy who's uh, Mark, who is mm -hmm. the one who's um, sort of obsessed mm -hmm. with his uh, neighbor. neighbor, and <laughs> right. and we get. Because I write this book in a very close third person, mm -hmm. we understand. We come to understand Mark's uh -huh. Mark's thoughts, and while he's definitely, um, you know, there's something disturbing about his personality. Mm -hmm. He's obsessive. Um, there's also a humor in it because uh -huh. I think, as a reader, we could sort of distance ourselves from the character and we could sort of judge their behavior. And I like to kind of get this sort of dynamic going right. in writing, no, where, where, the, where the reader kind of has their own um, opinion mm. about what, what's going on that I'm not necessarily hitting them over the head with. Because no, I think that's good. I think that's good. So let's just talk about like your process of writing, because that's something that really interests me. Do you sit down like every morning? Or, or how do you do it? Because it's, uh, you know, you write a couple of books a year, and it took me, like I said, five well, years to write <laughs> one book, and you just, tr you wrote, written, what, 16 books, graphic novel, and... Uh, yeah, and I've, I've written novels on my own. I've co-written four novels with um, well, I think Ken Bruin. It's uh, great. So what's your process? I'm Definitely. just curious. Um, I try to write a certain time every day, definitely in the morning. Mm -hmm. I take a break. Around lunch and try to write in the afternoon. I write in. I write in coffee bars. You do. Oh, yeah. that's good. You get up uh, at like eight in the morning. If you live on the Upper East Side. You've probably <laughs> seen but, me somewhere. But you get up at what time? I mean, not that you have to tell me your exact schedule. But yeah, I'm early in the morning, like seven thirty. Yeah. And you go right. Do you write before breakfast or um, just? I usually have a bite to eat, mm -hmm. a coffee. I mean, do you want all the details? I, I want <laughs> some of it, just to give me a, a feeling of what. Because you're successful. You're. Right. You've made it in a certain realm of uh, being a writer and I think that's great. Well one thing I'll add is I yeah. don't think that for writing in particular there's no set path. Ev uh -huh. Every writer I, I know if you ask this question right. would have a different answer. When I go to writers conferences I just um, mm -hmm. you know hear people talking about their mm -hmm. technique and everyone is different. Right. So it's something I think you have to find for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's um, you know it's not a career that I believe you, know, you could really go to school for and really right. learn. It's, you have to really learn on your own and come up with your own technique. And I think that's totally true for painters, right. musicians, any, any sort of art form. But for me, yeah, right in the morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> 7.30, um, go to a coffee bar. Um, usually, sometimes I'm writing on more than, working on more than one project oh, at are. a time. Okay. Um, while I was writing Savage Lane, I was writing the Wolverine comic book for, for Marvel. Oh, you are? So that's pretty great, yeah. amazing. So, so I would, oh. um, do it in a different spot. Like I found that if I got my mindset into one project, I would be at one coffee bar, oh. take a break, and then go to the other coffee bar and work on the next project. But the big enemy this, these days is um, cell phones. All right, um, emails, the internet, distraction. Email, yeah. yeah I mean. So it helps if I leave my phone home or... Good idea. Or yeah, so yeah. there's a program um, called Freedom you uh -huh. could get for your uh, p computer where you could disable the internet oh, for really? a certain amount, amount of time. I it's ironically called freedom when you're, restri <laughs> you're restricting yourself. I need to do that <laughs> yeah. because I you know, have something I've been working on. And so, um, how, uh, so you're going to Europe, right, on an international yep. tour mm -hmm. of this book? or Yeah, for Cyberplane, I'm going to Austria, Germany, um, the UK, back to Germany are you and big Italy. there? Do people know you? Are, are popular? As a um, yeah, for whatever reason. Like in Germany and Austria mm -hmm. in particular, mm -hmm. my books have done really well. I've been you know, high on the bestseller list in, wow. uh, in Austria. Um, I have a really good publisher there, but I also think that psychological thrillers are very big are, in, in, are in Europe. I think yeah. they're getting big here. I mean, Well, you have to uh, be a little more yeah. intelligent, a lot more than the action-packed that kind of silly Hollywood stuff is that's put out there. You, they're you know, intelligent <laughs> readers there. That's why they like the books. Yeah, they no, get I mean, it. I'm sure they there's get intelligent it. readers in the U.S. Yes. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so um, you say you also have a very active social media uh, life. Yeah, <laughs> so no. Yeah, I, yeah, I just said when I'm, when I'm not disabling the internet. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm on uh, Twitter. How do people, what's your Twitter? Twitter? It's handle? at Jason Starbucks. Okay. And... Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, definitely very active there. I, you know, I, some writers feel that Twitter is a waste of time. Really? You know, you know because it's a lot of people might not see your tweets. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's exponential, and when you right. get out there. But I also just enjoy the feedback. You know, mm -hmm. that you the instant feedback that you can get from mm -hmm. readers, fans, because it, it sort of reminds me of when I was writing plays. Mm -hmm when you get the immediate response of the audience, mm -hmm. um, which is very unique to the theater. Right. Um, and, you know, before the internet and particularly, you know, um, uh, outlets like Twitter, mm -hmm. there wasn't really a way to get that sort of immediate response and know how, what people were thinking of your books. Right. People would buy your book, go home, and even publishers had no idea mm. What readers thought about the books. And it's yeah. now it's great. And now you know instantly. You know, so. Would you say you're influenced by Stephen King? Or um, not so much. Somewhat. Yeah, I was a big Stephen King fan uh -huh. uh, growing up. Um, you know, I've, some of my books have definitely veered toward f fantasy and horror. Times I wrote a couple of werewolf novels. Oh, really? Um, they were probably my most. Similar to Stephen King. Are you ever stuff. Although he's writing crime fiction now. So. Right. But are you ever freaked out by your own thoughts? And like you ever say, no, I can't put that in. Does that happen? Usually when that happens, I feel like I'm doing something good. <laughs> <laughs> so you put I feel, <laughs> Yeah, I don't like to censor myself. Great. So I feel like if I shouldn't put that in, then I'm going to put it in. Like what's yeah. one example of that? Well, one thing I joke, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that Ken Bruin and I have written a mm -hmm. couple of books. Um, Several books for mm -hmm. hard case crime. We have one coming out in March mm -hmm. uh, called Pimp, mm -hmm. even though there's no pimp in the, in the book. Right. But uh, ironic title. But Ken and I were talking to the publisher mm -hmm. Charles Ardai about one of the plots for one of our books, mm -hmm. and um, Charles said, "Okay, I only have two rules." He said, uh, "No nuns <laughs> and no castration." <laughs> and Ken looks at me and he's like. He's like that, and because he's just, a, let's we have a just, non castrating we've just, we've just written that scene. <laughs> you did? <laughs> really? So, yeah, That's yeah. funny. So, do you take stuff from real life and kind of fictionalize it at all? Do you ever um, look at like. Cause, sometimes, yeah. Like, well, but usually not directly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, f there might be a line of dialogue or uh -huh. something someone said or a situation mm -hmm. that I'll kind of morph into a plot, but it won't be. Mm. exactly how it happens in real life. No, because oh, there's, there's so many disturbing stories, women throwing their babies off the roof, or the, yeah, yeah. Or the most fascinating and really disturbing was the Jody Arias case in Arizona. Did you follow that? Yeah, I did. She shoots, she stabs, she, you know, she's a, she's a maniac. Do you, are you inspired by that? No, <laughs> I'm not inspired. Look, I'm not a ripped from the headlines kind of writer. Okay. You know, everything I write, uh, you know, is more like personal type. Mm. Stories, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like a combination of entertaining myself as I'm writing, mm -hmm. therapy, and just, mm -hmm. you know, trying to work stuff out so, on mm -hmm. the page. But one thing, you know, I usually, you know, almost never would have any um, violence to children or, you know, right. there's some, mm -hmm. some lines, yeah. Right, but do you, then it seems like you go into like this inner creative space inside yourself and, and let kind of um, conversations or things emerge. Would you, would you say that's right? Um, yeah, I feel like when I sort of get into a rhythm mm -hmm. with writing, it sort of feels like a runner's high, uh -huh. sort of, where it just feels um, really relaxing just to kind of just be caught up in a conversation two characters are having or mm -hmm. describing something. The times when I'm kind of struggling over a scene are the least enjoyable when I feel like I'm more involved. So I think the, the closer I am to kind of being unconscious, as an um, artist, you're saying as a writer? Yeah, like when I kind of lose myself in it and become a little... That's why I think I write better, I've noticed, or just not necessarily better, but just more efficiently earlier in the morning and, you know, the times I'll write late at night. Mm. So I feel like the closer I am to being unconscious... Oh, uh, I see. The, yeah, the better I... Because what happens uh, in the creative um, spark unconsciously? What do you feel happens? Well, I think it's just you could get distracted by mm. your own thoughts oh, uh, I see. or overthinking something mm. or thinking mm. about another project I should be working on mm. or... Um, so in the morning you're sort of clearer and more directly yeah. connected. Um, yeah, but I don't get 
writer's block. Um, Which is what? Where you get... Um, well, when you just can't like think of anything to write about. I think oh. it's almost... I almost have the opposite problem You have now. too many ideas. Yeah, there's too many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, it's almost like trying to pick which is the best one. Right. Um, I feel like once I have an idea, I could write, you know, I, I'm going to be able to finish it. On do, you, do you ever feel so connected to your characters as if they, like, are beings, personality, and, and they, they're kind of dictating to you, like, they are this type of person? Um... I've heard no, that from some. I know, I know. I've heard like in some horror movies I've seen the <laughs> character. Now we are like a Stephen King, movie. <laughs> right. but I no. But I think they. You know, I could tell the difference between fantasy and reality. I don't. I'm not. I, I've heard writers say my characters you, were talking to me, or you don't get that, or my characters were telling me that they wanted me to write a sequel. But I, I never think that way. Okay, it's I'm going to see if you. I feel let me more. Know. I feel more <laughs> removed from the. Mm. process from that or in control of it however you want to look at it yeah so you're in control of so what's coming up for you I mean the tour but what kind of books and novels are I'm you doing about, um, I'm working on another um, psychological thriller type novel this one's set in this uh, in the city um, let's see I have that book Pimp that's coming out with, yeah what's that about again you said there was no it, the one, there's no pimp it's actually uh well, if you've, I don't know, you'd have to read the other okay. three books in the series. Oh, it's a that series? That is a series. Yeah, that's oh, number four. Oh, oh. We wrote, it was Bust, um, Slide, The Max. And well, who are these Pimp. characters in, in um, the series? Max Fisher is this businessman in Manhattan who's mm. sort of a, d kind of a crazed Donald Trump type character. <laughs> if Donald Trump could get more crazed. <laughs> um, that's funny. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, and his adventures with his, uh, this woman, Angela, it's like a sort of love story that goes on for mm. as a saga. Mm. Um, and Ken is Irish, and so there's a lot of Irish-American mm. sort of themes. But they're very funny books, uh -huh. you know, um, dark humor, so that could hard be, case crime. That could be a nice series, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah we're, we've been talking about that. Mm -hmm. Well, great. I mean, good <laughs> luck. But, you know, I find in writing and in creativity, like, you sit down and, and things just come out of nowhere. And that's, like, such, feels like such a gift. Do you feel like, wow, where did that idea come from sometimes? Um, sometimes, you know, like, I'll, sometimes I'll just sit down, you know, always on a laptop mm -hmm. and um, come up with an idea. Like, sometimes, you know, now it's more pitching ideas. Uh -huh. Sometimes an editor will ask me, what the idea for my next book is. And I'll say, oh, I have a great idea. And I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so and then, then it I, comes to you, me? So then I sit down and I, I'll... Again, like, over, over the years, like, whenever I do have some sort of idea, I'll mm. type it into, like, um, a short, very short file. Mm. So I have a lot of ideas, like, just on my laptop. So at times when I really need an idea, I'll go to them and see if any of them are still good. Right. It's kind of like when you wake up from a dream in the middle mm -hmm. of the night and mm -hmm. it seems like this really poignant dream and you write it down. And then a few hours later, you th it's absolutely ridiculous. Right. So some, some of the ideas do seem dumb mm -hmm. in retrospect. But do you, I mean, this show sort of has some uh, mystical elements. Do you ever get into any of the paranormal, mystical, metaphysical stuff in yes. your books? Yes, uh, in my books, definitely oh. in the... Um, in this graphic novel I wrote called mm. The Returning, um, which is in development as a movie, um, came out last year, mm -hmm. and it has to do with near-death experiences. Oh, wow. And I've interviewed um, a lot of those people. Yeah. Uh, Nita Morjani is one of my, do you know her book, Dying yep, to yep, Be yep, Me? Yep, yeah, she, yep. she's been a guest. But um, This is sort of the sort of dark side of um, near-death experiences where people are coming back changed their oh. behavior oh, like changed. a little weird like a little yeah it's almost sort of a zombie story without zombies <laughs> okay <laughs> that that's funny so um how many hours a day do you say so sit down in the morning how long do you write i write a few hours a few hours in the morning Usually a few hours in the afternoon, so I'd say like five, six hours, mm -hmm. and then if I have time in the evening, I'll write then too. Sometimes I'll, you know, I'll be reading and I'll kind of feel like, um, wow, I should be writing that. Right. So, or you in the, the only shower? Thing, yeah. So like my reading time has got cut into lately, but mm. let me get an idea in the shower or something or something. Yeah, the, actually, that's interesting. Yeah, the shower mm. is great, and running because you're something more about relaxed. Heat. 
So about being. I've been if I was in the steam room, I'd come out with a great <laughs> idea. Great steamy yeah, novel. Just, yeah. But uh, how can people reach you? Um, um, my website, uh, yeah, totally. www.jasonstar.com. And for more direct access at Twitter, Twitter at Jason Star Books. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Good luck with Thank your you. career, and you're, I mean, you're moving forward. You're, you're hot. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Thanks. I've been talking to Jason Starr, and he, um, his latest book, Savage Lane, and you could, um, you'll be talking in New York maybe about this book at all? Um, um, I just had a lunch party here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in um, Boston in November, but all my um, appearances are on my website. Thanks for watching New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld. If you want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com. Good night. Okay. <laughs> that was good. That's flowed. That was smooth. Good. Yes. Thank you.